Hello everyone, welcome to Testpad MBA Prep. In this session, we will look into functions and graphs. Uh, this is an important topic as far as CAT, ZAT, and MAT SNAP are concerned. So first, we will look into what is a function and what is a relation, and what what is the difference between these two. And then we will move on to iterative functions, and then we will solve some uh, problems. And then we will move on to the GIFs, uh, which are the greatest integer functions. And then we will apply them. Then we will move on to the odd and, ev odd and even functions. And then domain, codomain, range and their application. And then we will move on to the transformation of graphs. How uh, we will look into how graphs get transformed in all the cases. And then uh, we will look into the concept of area of bounded region and some tricks to solve the the problems regarding the area of bounded region after that we will move on to pix theorem and the application of that theorem so let us start so what is the difference between a function and a relation let us say um, let me take an example to explain you the difference between these two so i have a set a okay so let us name the set as a and i have elements p k and a all right so p k and a are persons and i have one more set in which there is football chess tennis and cricket right so this is set a and this is set b these are the elements now what is a relation? A relation means uh, each input, right? Each input has at least one output. So I have taken like this. So just observe this. Uh, what did you understand from these two? See, you can basically understand that in a relation, for instance, here, these are the names P, K and A. Each one is related to at least one, out one output, right? At least one output each one is related p is related to tennis and uh, cricket k is related to tennis a is related to football so this is about relation what about function here each and every name is related to exactly one output here it is exactly one output whereas in a relation it is at least one output hope you got the difference are functions relations are all functions relations yes all functions are relations but all relations are not functions all right in a relation there can be more than one output whereas in a function it, it, it is it is mapped only to one output so this is the difference between a function and a relation see functions are denote dependency functions always denote dependency for instance, if we say y is equal to f of x, right? So the value of y is always dependent on the value of x. So we can say that uh, functions can be treated as uh, input output operation. You input here something and you will get output something, right? So if you if you input here something, you will get some output according to that. For instance, if we input f of x as 2x plus 3 right so we have taken this f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 and if we input f of 3 right if we input f of 3 then what do we get 2 into 3 plus 3 this is equal to 9 this is the output when your input is 3 your output is 9 when your input is 5 your output will be 13 so depending on the input your output also depends so functions are basically functions denote dependency and it should be noted here that for every in one input there will be only one unique output right this is not like 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 this see there's one input right there's one input and there won't be there won't be two outputs this is wrong for instance here the input is 3 right the function is 2x plus 3 right and your output is 9 can you get any other value other than 9 when you are inputting uh, 3 
no you cannot get so there is one only one input for every one output this is a function so what are iterative functions see iterative functions can be expressed as see generally iterative function is in in this form for instance if we if we want to find out f2x right f2x then we can express f2x it's see this is in the form of f and x so we can express f2x in the form of f of f of n minus 1 so 2 minus 1 of x all right so please remember here n is always greater than 1 n should be greater than 1 so well, if we want to find out the value of f of 4 right f4x so how can we make it f of what is f uh, n minus 1 4 minus 1 right so f of 3 of x so this is how we represent f4x what about f3x f3x can be represented as f of f of 3 minus 1 which is 2 of x so here we have for the f4x we have f3x interior and we know the value of f3x so we can just substitute here all right take any number take anything uh, we can generalize it by using this generalization okay so you will be much more clear when we apply this so we shall um, solve some problems now so here what is given f1x is equal to 2x plus 3 all right so find the value of f4 of 3 so we shall do one thing we shall first find the value of f1 of x right f1 of x and then we'll find out by using the value of f1 of x we'll find out the value of f2 of x and then f3 and then f4 all right so f1 of x which is equal to here x is equal to 3 so f1 of 3 is equal to just substitute here 2 into 3 plus 3 this is 9 now f2 of 3 what is f2 of 3 f of f1 of 3 in the previous slide we learned about this so this is equal to f1 of 3 we know this is 9 so f of 9 just substitute 9 here right so 2 into 9 18 18 plus 3 this is equal to 21 now f3 of 3 we are asked to find out f4 of 3 okay so f3 of 3 is equal to f of f2 of 3 now f2 of 3 we know the value which is 21 so f of 21 just substitute 21 so 2 into 21 plus 3 this is 45 now we are asked to find out f4 of 3 f4 of 3 is equal to f of f3 of 3 and f3 of 3 we know uh, which is 45 so substitute here we'll get 93 so simply see uh, as this is the first time i'm just explaining each and everything if you carefully observe here whatever you got in the next step you are just substituting that here you got 21 and the next step you are substituting 21 here here you got 45 and now you are substituting in the next step into x plus 3 so whatever the value of previous step you are substituting that value for the next step let's move on to the next one if f1 of x is equal to x minus 1 by x plus 1 then find the value of f100 of x see uh, if you consider f 100x so this is a very big term big number so definitely there must be a pattern in which it flows so if we observe that pattern then we can solve the problem even in a quick quick way we can solve this quickly so we are given that f1 of x is equal to x minus 1 by x plus 1 so what is f2 of x f2 of x is nothing but f of f1 of x right and we know f1 of x is equal to what is f1 of x x minus 1 by x plus 1 right i have just substituted so x minus 1 by x plus 1 so f of x minus 1 by x plus 1 so just substitute this in the place of x here all right so after substituting what we'll get we'll get x minus 1 by x plus 1 minus 1 by 
x minus 1 by x plus 1 plus 1. So take LCM and simplify, we'll get minus 1 by x. Just simplify this, we'll get minus 1 by x. So this is f2x, now we shall find f3x. f3x is equal to, so just substitute this here. Minus 1 by x, minus 1 by, minus 1 by x plus 1. This will be equal to 1 plus x by 1 minus x. So this is f2x. This is the value of f3x. I think we haven't yet got the pattern. So we shall uh, solve some more, some more steps. So f f4x. What is f4x? f4x will be equal to substitute this one. 1 plus x minus 1. So 1 plus x by 1 minus x minus 1 by 1 plus x by 1 minus x plus 1. So after simplification, we'll get the value of f4x as x. So this is the value of f4 of x. Now what about f5 of x? f5 of x will be equal to the substitute x in the above equation in the above function. So x minus 1 by x plus 1. This is the value of f5 of x. This is f5 of x. Now if you observe this is f1 of x and this is f5 of x the values are same so the cyclicity continues it, it keeps on continuing so this is the first value this is the fifth value so the cyclicity is 4 cyclicity is 4 so just divide the power which is 100 100 by 4 this, the remainder is 0 0 means it's the last term we have to consider the last term of the cyclicity this is the first term, the second term, the third uh, value, this is the fourth value, right? So fourth value is the last uh, last term of the cyclicity. As we got the remainder zero, we have to consider the last value of the cyclicity, which is x. So f100x, so f100x is equal to x. So what is given? f of, if f of uh, 2x plus 1, comma 3y minus 1, is equal to x plus y x plus y which of the following will be equal to f of 3x minus 1 comma 2y plus 1 so we have to just find out among all the four options the value of which option will be equal to the value of this function so the basic condition that we must remember is this this is important for this equation or for this question so let us uh, take this 2x plus 1 and 3y minus 1 if we equate 2x plus 1 with a and if we equate this one with b then we'll get x as a minus 1 by 2 and here we'll get y as b plus 1 by 3 so we have considered this one as a and this one as b so f of a comma b will be equal to x plus y so what is x a minus 1 by 2 plus y what is y b plus 1 by 3 so now we will get the value as a by 2 plus b by 3 minus 1 by 6 so just we want to uh, we have to find out the value of this function so f of 3x minus 1 comma 2y plus 1 this is equal to see here this is equal to a and this is equal to b as we already know just substitute this here so 3x minus 1 by 2 plus what is b b is 2y plus 1 by 3 this is equal to uh, sorry minus 1 by 6 so if we further simplify we will get 3x by 2 plus 2y by 3 minus 1 by 3 so is there any option like that 3x yeah, so first option. So 3, 3 by 2x plus 2 by 3y minus 1 by 3. So this is equal to f of 3x minus 1 comma 2y plus 1. So the value of this function is when we substitute, we'll get the this value. So let's move to the next question, which is a function f is defined for real values of x and y as f of x plus f of y is equal to f of x plus y minus 1 
if f of 0 is equal to 1 find the value of f of minus 1 all right so the first thing which we must remember is f of 0 is equal to 1 and what is the other condition this is the other condition okay now just think about this to find the uh, directly we cannot calculate the value of f of minus 1 there must be a step by step procedure so let's calculate the value of f of 1 right first we'll calculate the f of 1 and by using that value we'll we'll calculate we'll try to calculate the value of f of minus 1 so how can we calculate the value of f of 1 so this is the condition and f of 0 is equal to 1 we know these two so with these two we can do one thing if we substitute 0 in the place of x then f of 0 plus f of 0 will be equal to will get a value on the right hand side but on the left hand side if you observe f of 0 so 0 will be 0 plus f of 0 this f of 0 will be equal to 1 so overall 1 plus 0 will be equal to 1 and f of 1 is equal to we will get some value so first we will substitute x as 0 and y as 0 so it will get f of we are taking this one f of 0 plus f of 0 this this will be equal to f of 0 plus 0 minus 1 f of 0 is always 0 so f of 0 what is the value of f of 0 it is 1 so f of 1 is equal to f of 0 is equal to 1 minus uh, sorry plus 0 minus 1 so this is minus 1 hence f of 1 is equal to 0 all right so we now uh, we know the value of f of 1 so how can we calculate the value of f of minus 1 what are the values that we can substitute in order to derive f of minus 1 so just observe if we make y as 0 right if you make y as 0 and if we put x as minus 1 let let's do that let us see what we will get so x as minus 1 and let's substitute y as 0 we, we can substitute any value provided uh, we can substitute any value until we get the value that we wanted to get right we until we find out the value of so we can substitute any value the, uh, there is no uh, restriction to that so x is equal to minus 1 let's substitute this f of if we substitute here f of minus 1 plus f of y is 0 so this will be equal to f of minus 1 plus y is 0 and minus 1 so plus 0 minus 1 this is minus 1 now we know f of 0 is 1 so 1 minus 1 this will be equal to f of 0 and again we know f of 0 is equal to 1 so let us substitute here f of 0 is equal to 1 and f of minus 1 minus 1 so f of minus 1 this minus 1 comes uh, comes to the other side and we'll get f of minus 1 as 2 so this is the value that we must find out so f of 1 is equal to 2 so this is just manipulating the values just manipulating uh, the values and we are just calculating what we have to calculate there's nothing uh, there's no formula or nothing just you have to think and you have to substitute values and just uh, derive the values so let us uh, move on to the next concept which is the greatest integer function gif so what is the greatest integer function so we always represent uh, greater greatest integer function between these these brackets right like this for instance if if i say uh, what is the greatest uh, see what is the gif of 1 what is the answer it is 1 what is the gif of minus 2 it is minus 2 itself then what is the how about the gif of 1.5 1.5 gif is 1 so what is meant by gif so gif generally rounds down to a real number that is nearest to this integer if you take any integer it, it just rounds down to the nearest value and x in this case so x must be either the gif of x must be either less than x or equal to x so for instance take 1 the gif 1 is 1 
it, it is equal to x because it is a it is an integer minus 2 minus 2 is also an integer hence the gaf of minus 2 is minus 2 however 1.5 is not an integer so to make it an integer it, it should round to the nearest integer which is less than 1.5 hence 1 is the nearest integer which is less than 1.5 so this is the gaf of 1.5 all right now what is the gaf of minus 3.89 it is not minus 3 it is minus 4 don't get confused just use a number line this is minus 3 this is minus 4 and this is minus 2 so we are asked to find out gaf of minus 3.89 in this case, what is the nearest integer which is less than 3.39 or 3.89? So minus 4 is less than 3 minus uh, 3.89. Hence, minus 4 is the GAF. And what is the uh, GAF of 4.99? 4. So let us apply the concept of GAF. So find the sum of the first 50 terms of the expression. So the flow is 1 by 5 plus 1, 2 by 5 plus 2, 3 by 5 plus 3 and so on till 50 by 5 plus 50 right so till 50 by 5 plus 50 so let us calculate the gf of this what is 1 by 5 1 by 5 is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 plus 1 what is the gf 1.2 1.2 gf is 1 so gf of 2 by 5 plus 2 so 2 point something so this will be 2 and gf of this one will be 3 so on this will be 4 5 and what is the gf of the last expression 50 by 5 5 plus 50 50 by 5 so 10 10 plus 50 this will be 60 so gf of 60 will be 60 that is the integer integer itself so the value of 60 what is the previous value 59 but i don't think so 59 will come here because the previous one will be 49 by 5 plus 49 right so the gf of 49 by 5 plus 49 is what is 49 by 5 49 by 5 is 9.8 so plus 49 this will be equal to 58.8 so what is the gaf for 58.8 it's 58 so 59 is missing right so after immediately after 58 60 comes here all right so even though some are uh, missing some terms are missing here first we shall uh, calculate the sum of the terms right from 1 to 60 and then we will just subtract the terms that are missing from the value that we get so what is the sum of all terms from 1 to 60 it's n into n plus 1 by 2 this will be equal to or the total terms total terms are 60 into 60 plus 1 by 2 so 1830 so 1830 is the sum of all the terms right from 1 to 60 now what are the missing values does 5 come here 5 by 5 plus 5 so 5 plus 1 this is 6 jf of 6 is 6 so 5 is missing so 5 is missing, 11 is missing, 17 is missing till 59, right? So 58 and 60, 59 is missing. So the first term is 5 and the last term is 59. And we shall just calculate the sum. Sum will be equal to first term plus last term by 2 into the number of terms that is 10. So from 5 to 59, these are the total number of terms will be 10 so this will be equal to 320 right the sum of the missing terms is 320 and the total uh, number total sum is 1830 so just subtract this 1830 minus 320 this will be equal to 1510 so the first the, the sum of the first 50 terms of the expression after calculating all the GAFs will be 1510 let's move to the next question which is f of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus x when x is greater than 0 and 1 plus x if x is lesser than or equal to 0 
and the condition is also given fn fn of x is equal to f of fn minus 1 of x and if x is equal to 1 find the value of f1x at f2x and so on till f9x okay so just one thing you must remember if the value of x is greater than 0 you must consider this function if the value of x is either 0 or less than 0, you must consider this one. So let us calculate f of 1 now. F, f1x is equal to, so as we know x is equal to 1, let me substitute here. f of 1 is equal to, so 1 by, see 1 is greater than 0, right? So let us take this 1 by 1 plus 1, this is 1 by 2. Now f2 of, f2 of 1, this is equal to, f2 of 1 can be written as f of f1 of 1 so this is f1 of 1 we know the value is 1 by 2 so f of 1 by 2 just substitute this here so this will be equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 this will be equal to 2 by 3 the same we calculate uh, the value of f3 of 1 so this will be just substitute 2 by 3 here 1 by 1 plus 2 by 3 this is equal to 3 by so no need to calculate for each and every value if if we get any pattern right so did you observe any pattern the f1 of 1 is 1 by 2 the next is 2 by 3 and the next is 3 by 5 right so have you observed any pattern the denominator is moving to the numerator and the denominator's value is the sum of the numerator and denominator so this is 1 by 2 so 1 plus 2 is 3 and this 2 is jumping here so 3 plus 3 plus 2 is 5 so the next one is 5 plus 3 this is 8 5 by 8 and the next one is 8 plus 5 this will be 13 and this will be 8 and the next one will be 13 by 21 21 by 34 34 by 50 5 and 55 by 89 so just cancel this 5 5 8 8 13 13 21 21 34 34 55 and 55 and we are left with the numerator 1 and denominator 89 so 1 by 89 is the answer so we have one more question this is the first one so we solve this let me write the second question so the second one is if x is equal to minus 1 find f5 of x i think in this case we can apply this we can apply the second condition given here all right so let's calculate if so x is equal to minus 1 is given so f of f1 minus 1 this will be equal to since minus 1 is less than 0 we can we have to take this one 1 plus x right 1 plus x so 1 what is the value of x it's minus 1 so this will be 0 what is f2 of minus 1 f2 of minus 1 can be written as f of f1 of minus 1 so this will be equal to f of f1 of minus 1 we know this is 0 so this will be 0 just substitute here 1 plus x 1 plus 0 this is 1 f3 of minus 1 will be equal to just substitute 1 here 1 plus 1 f3 of minus 1 is equal to we can write it as f of f2 of minus 1 this will be equal to f of what is f2 of minus 1 1 so f of 1 here observe here just just observe here f of 1 1 is greater than 0 so we have to again come back to the first condition so 1 by 1 plus x this is equal to substitute 1 by 1 plus 1 this is equal to 2 what about f4 of x f4 of x can be written as f of f3 of x so this is equal to f of 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 is greater than 0 so just substitute 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 this is equal to so this is 2 and this is 3 2 by 3 so what is f5 of x f5 of x that is f5 of minus 1 this is equal to as 2 by 3 is uh, greater than 0 you substitute 2 by 3 in the first case which is 1 by 1 plus 2 by 3 this is equal to 3 by 5 so f of uh, f5 of x is equal to 3 by 5
so let's move on to the even function and odd function so what is a what is an even function well there are certain uh, conditions for a function to become an even function what are those so if f of x is equal to f of minus x right so when f of x is equal to f of minus x when this condition is satisfied then we can say that that function is an even function let us take an example so for instance if we take f of x is equal to x square and if we substitute let's say 2 right so f of 2 will be equal to 2 square this is 4 what about f of minus 2 f of minus 2 will be equal to minus 2 square this will be equal to 4 hence what can we say f of 2 is equal to f of minus 2 is this satisfied yes this is satisfied f of x is equal to f of minus x f of 2 is equal to f of minus 2 so this is an example of an even function what about an odd function the condition for the odd function is f of x is equal to minus of f of minus x right minus of f of minus x so this is also for all the uh, real values of x for all the real values of x let us take an example here for instance if we say f of x is equal to x cube right so this is an odd function now we shall first calculate for f of minus x so f of minus x will be equal to so minus x of minus x whole cube this is equal to minus x cube right now what about uh, minus f of minus x minus f of minus x will be equal to this substitute minus of minus x cube this will be equal to x cube see f of minus x is equal to minus x cube and minus f of minus x is equal to x cube which is satisfying this equation right this condition f of x is equal to f minus of minus f of minus x kindly remember these two conditions because uh, these will definitely come in handy when we solve different questions so the next concept is domain codomain and range so i considered two sets set a is equal to p k and a so these are the elements of set a and set b is equal to football chess tennis and cricket so these are the games played by p k and a and now i related p with cricket right because p plays cricket k plays k also plays cricket and a plays football now we can define domain as what can go into a function so uh, here p k and a so this is my domain and what about co domain co domain is what can come out of a function so these are the possibilities which can come out of a function so this is my codomain and what about range range is what actually comes out of a function so what is the range range here is cricket and football so these two come under my range see uh, just observe the difference domain is what you have everything which we can take as input so here these three p k and a these three can be taken as input so this is domain codomain means the possible outcomes they are not the actual outcomes all the elements that are in codomain may not be the outcomes some of them may be the outcomes so all the possible outcomes come under codomain and what actually come out is the range so this is the range now how can we find domain to find domain there are certain rules that we must follow we must take care of those rules the first one is rules depend on the condition given for instance if we have any negative number under root let's say x minus 4 sixth root of x minus 4 now to find domain of this this function what can we do how can you find the domain we know the basic rule which is there shouldn't be any negative term under root which means 
x minus 4 which is under under root in this case this should be greater than or equal to 0 so this is equal to x is greater than or equal to 4 so this is my domain this is the domain of this this function let us take this is one rule because uh, the basic rule is under this root under any root there shouldn't be any negative term otherwise it, it becomes complex it's a complex term and one more thing is if if we have anything in in p by q form q uh, the denominator shouldn't be equal to zero for instance we have 15 by x minus 6 right 15 by x minus 6 here we can say that x minus 6 should not be equal to zero right x minus 6 shouldn't be equal to zero which means x shouldn't be equal to 6 so this is my domain so in this way we can calculate domain and the last rule is the last rule is when we have logs right when we have a logarithmic function let's say log 80 to the base x minus 3 let's take this log 80 to the base x minus 3 how can we find the domain of this this logarithmic function we know the basic rules right what are the rules what are the conditions base should be greater than 0 and shouldn't be equal to 1 right see log x to the base here this is the general uh, generalization so a shouldn't be a which is the base sh should be greater than 0 and shouldn't be equal to 1 what about x x must always be greater than 0 so these two are the conditions which must satisfy while we are solving logarithmic functions or even when we are solving the domains so let us calculate the domain of log 80 to the base x minus 3 so x minus 3 should be greater than 0 and what is one more condition x minus 3 shouldn't be equal to 1 so x minus x is greater than 3 x should be greater than 3 and x shouldn't be equal to 4 because if x is equal to 4 this will become 0 which shouldn't be so this is the uh, domain of this logarithmic function now uh, this domain concept can be applied anywhere just uh, you must focus on the basic rules that the function must satisfy for instance uh, just find the domain of this logarithmic function just calculate the domain so here we don't we do not have base so no need to worry about the base so 7x minus 12 minus x square this should be greater than 0 so once I change the symbols x square minus 7x plus 12 this will become less than 0 so x minus 4 into x minus 3 this will be 0 and what are my critical points critical points are 4 and 3 once I equate x minus 4 and x minus 3 with 0 so 4 comma 3 are my critical points just put them on number line this is 3 this is 4 and uh, the coefficient of x square is definitely positive and so let us start with positive negative positive as it is less than 0 we shall just uh, take this into consideration 3 to 4 so what is the domain domain of this logarithmic function is 3 comma 4 c bracket we are not including 3 comma 4 because if we include 3 any of any one if we include 3 it will be 0 if we include 4 it, it will also be 0 but the condition is less than 0 right less than 0 so the domain of this logarithmic function is 3 comma 4 see all these concepts that we are discussing in this session are all are important because when when we club all the concepts together you can solve any question that comes from functions functions and graphs so watch every each and every concept that is being discussed in this video so that you will be in a position to solve any type of question as far as functions and graphs are concerned so how can we calculate inverse of a function inverse of a function we, uh, we can also uh, state inverse of a function as input output interchange anything is same inverse uh, let me take an example to explain the inverse of a function 
if we take f of x is equal to 2x plus 5 now how can we calculate the inverse of a function here the best way right the best way to function is to first equate this to y first equate this to y all right then calculate x so 2x plus 5 will be equal to y x is equal to y minus 5 by 2 all right now what you must do is wherever there is y wherever there is y just substitute that with x this is the next step wherever there is y wherever there is y just substitute that with x so x minus 5 by 2 this is my inverse only two steps just first equate that to y calculate x and wherever there is y just um, substitute that with x that is that will be the inverse of the function that is given this is how you calculate inverse of a function any function inverse of any function so in the previous slides we discussed how to find domain of a function and how to find inverse of a function now how can we calculate the range of a function we can calculate the range of a function by following these three steps the first one is find the inverse we will take an example so that you will understand let let me uh, write the three steps first first one is find the inverse second step is to find the domain of the inverse and what is the third step the third step is the third step is just to verify the result of step 2 with the original function that is given let me take an example here so calculate the range of range for f of x which is equal to x minus 4 by x 5 minus x let us take 5 minus x so x minus 4 by 5 minus x let us calculate the range of this so apply first step find the inverse how, how can we find the inverse how can we find the inverse just equate this to y so x minus 4 by 5 minus x this is equal to y so what is x x will be equal to 5y plus 4 by 1 plus y just calculate you will be able to get this 5y plus 4 by 1 plus y now where is just insert just substitute x wherever there is y so that we'll get 5x plus 4 by 1 plus x this is my inverse first step is completed finished what about this second one what is the second step step two is find the domain we have to find the domain of this inverse function so 5x plus 4 by 1 plus x now this is step 2 just observe the denominator neglect the numerator just observe the denominator 1 plus x 1 plus x denominator shouldn't be equal to 0 we all know that so 1 plus x shouldn't be equal to 0 and x shouldn't be equal to minus 1 so what is the domain of this function all the real numbers except minus 1 this is the domain of this function all the real numbers except minus 1 it can take any real number it, it can also be negative it can also be negative it shouldn't be zero that's it it can be negative it can be positive provided the denominator shouldn't be zero so this is my domain what is the next step verify the result of step 2 with original function what is step 2 step 2 the result is r minus real number minus uh, real numbers except minus 1 just verify this with the original function what is the original function this is the original function can we uh, apply is this valid for the original function let us take x if we substitute any value if we substitute this any real number this condition is this valid this is valid sometimes it can be negative sometimes it is positive but this uh, domain satisfies right hence the range of this function is all the real numbers except minus 1 so now we shall move on to the transformation of transformation of graphs so we are taking this uh, graphic calculator from desmos.com 
now this is just for your observation because uh, once you are clear with what type of function is forming what type of graph right the types of graphs once you are clear with the shape of the graph once you visualize the shape of the graph that can be handy while solving problems right so let us say if we take f of x the graph of modulus of x so let me take it here f of x is equal to modulus of x modulus of x so now what we are doing is we are adding some value externally right we are not adding inside the modulus we are adding outside the modulus let us add 2 so modulus of x plus 2 here you go so now what happened uh, just observe this our original uh, graph was this one the graph of modulus of x it is touching the origin what happened one once we added 2 externally it just shifted from 0 to 2 how much we are adding it just shifts so if we add 3 right if we add 3 it just moved from 0 to 3 if we add 4 it, it moved from 0 to 4 so what happens if we instead of adding if we subtract what will happen this is the original graph now we are just subtracting 2 we are subtracting externally now what happened it just moved from 0 to minus 2 if we take minus 3 it further goes down if we take minus 4 further goes down so when we are adding externally to the modulus it is moving upwards when we are subtracting externally to the modulus it is moving downwards this is the observation that you must make now what happens if we add internally not externally inside the modulus if we add a value let us take let us take now if we add internally let's take modulus of x plus 2 all right so modulus of x plus 2 now what happened there is just a shift from 0 to minus 2 that is to the left side not upwards not downwards just left side when, uh, when we added externally it just uh, it just moved upwards when we are adding internally in the modulus it is just move, it is just shifting from origin to the left side right what happens if we subtract just observe the difference if we are adding so if we are subtracting it is moving to the right side so these are the four cases just uh, make a note of it you can also have a look at this uh, calculator i will provide this in the description box just uh, to make some observations now we shall uh, have a look at the sin x uh, function right sin x a uh, graph so sin x so this is the graph of sin x what happens if we add if we multiply if we multiply inside let's say instead of sin x we shall take sin 2x so instead of x we shall take sin 2x now what did you observe the red one the red colored graph is the original one which is the graph of sin x and the green colored graph is the graph of sin 2x just observe the limit is same uh, wherever the upper limit wherever the sin x graph is touching the limit is same for the sin 2x graph also right so this is the limit and the lower limit is this one limit is same but we can see once we are multiplying something to x the graph is shrinking right the red one is it is flexible whereas the green one once we have multiplied that with 2 it just shrunk now what happens if we keep on multiplying if we just uh, instead of 2 if we take 5 it shrunk further if we take 10 it shrunk even further now what happens if we instead of multiplying if we just divide if we divide 
so we are dividing sin x by 1 see sin x is equal to sin x by 1 it is same x by 1 is equal to x so there is no change it's just overlap it's it's the same graph what about sin x by 2 see the difference it it is even stretching right what about x by 3 it it further stretches what about x by 4 it even stretches right it's very flexible it's it, it it's stretching even further so this is the observation that you have to make when you are dividing it doesn't shrink it stretches but when you are multiplying sine uh, x with something right like 2x 3x 4x it shrinks when you're dividing it is not the case now the next case is we multiplied in internally we also divided we will multiply externally now so instead of taking sine 2x we will take 2 sin x right 2 sin x observe the difference what is the difference the limit in the first case sine 2x was the same but here the limit the upper limit as well as the lower limit the lower bound as well as the upper bound got changed just see this red graph the original one sin x graph it is the limit is here right it's touching here whereas the violet graph that is the graph of 2 sin x it even stretched further right it even stretched further so stretching in the direction of y it is stretching in the direction of y same goes with the lower stretch as well it is stretching in the direction of minus y however it is stretching in the direction of in the y-axis right y in the sense y-axis what if we multiply even further it further stretches in the direction of y-axis right along with y-axis if it is 10 for the stretches right now the next case important case is we shall take a modulus function where the area is involved let us take modulus of x plus modulus of y is equal to 4 just observe the uh, shape of this the area of this modulus of x plus modulus of y is equal to 4 now what if we add some value inside the modulus of x so this is the area of graph this is the area of this um, function right but what if we add something to the modulus of x inside does the area remain same or does uh, will there be any change in the area let us see let us see see so modulus of x right modulus of x plus 3 plus modulus of y have you observed the difference there is no change in the area however the graph just shifted to the left side see we just added uh, some value to the x what happens if we add to y if we add to y do you think there will be any change in the area of graph no there won't be any change but there will be a shift but where does the graph go it does it go to the go to the right side or upwards or downwards just see how it just moved downwards if it is y plus 4 further down if it's y plus 7 even further down so the area is same the area of these two graphs is same there is just a shift so from this what did you learn even if you add any value any value inside the modulus there won't be any change in the area right there won't be any change in the area uh, just revise the video once again and note down all the uh, cases so that you will be clear in each and every case all right now the next topic is area of bounded region CAT has been testing regularly every year from this topic and all are direct questions just apply the formula and you will get the answer so there are certain shortcuts to deal with the questions that come under uh, area of the bounded region 
just apply this uh, shortcuts and you, you can get any answer within 10 to 15 seconds so what is uh, the first one the first case is this case one if the function is in the form modulus of x plus modulus of y is equal to k right then what is the area of this area of this region is area can be calculated by using 2k square 2k square for instance find the area of modulus of x plus modulus of y is equal to 5 find the area of this so 2 into what is k k is 5 5 square so this is equal to 50 as simple as that so this is case 1 note down this so what is case 2 now we will add something here something uh, see we observed in the graphs in the previous uh, slides right so we will add something some value inside the modulus let's say x plus a plus y plus b is equal to k now do you think there, there will be any change in the area of the region no there won't be any change we observed this in the previous slides in the graphical representation so in this case also the area is equal to 2k square for instance just calculate the value of x plus 3 plus y minus 2 if you want to calculate this value we can simply substitute 2 into what is uh, k square k square is 5 square this is equal to 50 all right this is case 2 and the area remains same it just shifts the area just the figure just shifts there won't be any change in the area now what about case 3 the third case is let's say if you're multiplying x with p px plus a plus modulus of qy plus b is equal to k so you are multiplying x with p and we are multiplying y with q that area will be equal to the same thing 2k square however whatever we are multiplying just uh, put them in denominator p and here it is q so p into q this is the area for instance let us uh, calculate the area of this 3x plus 4 modulus plus 2y minus 3 modulus is equal to 5 so area will be equal to 2 into k square k, k square is 5 square 5 square is 25 by we are multiplying x with 3 and y with 2 so 3 into 2 this will be equal to 25 by 3 now the next case is where modulus of x plus modulus of x minus y will be equal to k as we already discussed even if you are multi uh, even if you are adding or subtracting inside the modulus the area remains same so the area will be equal to 2k square the area won't get affected right the the shape will just get shifted but the area won't get affected and what about the next case next case is when modulus of a into x plus modulus of bx minus cy is equal to k how can you find the area area will be equal to the same 2k square by what value did we multiply with x a so a comes in the denominator into the value in which we multiply we multiplied with y comes in the denominator into c this is x and this is also x x remains same so 2k squared by a into c let us take an example here modulus of 4x plus 6x minus 3y this will be equal to 5 right just calculate the area area will be equal to 2k square 2 into 5 square by what is a a is 4 4 into what is c c is minus 3 just calculate this we will get 26 uh, 25 by 6 as area minus 25 by 6 as area is always positive take positive positive sign 
now what is the last case the last case is if it is in the form x plus y modulus of x plus y right plus modulus of x minus y this is equal to k we are adding y to x and then in the second case we are subtracting y right so in this case the area will be equal to k square it gets squared right squared for instance uh, let us calculate the area of x plus y plus x minus y is equal to 6 what is the area area is equal to 6 square that is equal to 36 square units so by using uh, these cases these shortcut tricks you can easily calculate area uh, the area of the boundary region just keep revising them so let us uh, solve this let f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 comma 3 minus 4x where x is any real number then the minimum possible value of f of x so here the maximum value maximum value of uh, 2x plus 1 comma 3 minus 4x it is given but we are asked to find out the minimum possible value of f of x so 2x plus 1 is it an increasing function or a decreasing function 2x plus 1 it is an increasing function increasing function why because if you substitute uh, the value of x right if you keep on substituting value of x the graph will let's take this the graph will be like this and what about this this is a decreasing function 3 minus 4x because if we keep on substituting the value of x something that will always be declining right it always be declining now we are asked to find out the minimum value of f of x when can the value be minimum see this is always decreasing let me change the color okay this is always decreasing right what is this this is the graph of 3 minus 4x this is the uh, function graph of function uh, graph of 3 3 minus 4x keep on decreasing whereas the this is the graph of 2x plus 1 the values keep on increasing but when will they be same they will be same at this meeting point right uh, they will be when will they be minimum uh, possible value they will be minimum when they are meeting at this point at this intersection they will be minimum which means when 2x plus 1 is equal to 3 minus 4x we can find out the minimum possible value so 6x is equal to 2 x is equal to 1 by 3 now don't take 1 by 3 right away still there is something to do what is that what is that that find the minimum possible value this is not the minimum possible value just we have calculated the value of x to find the minimum possible value just substitute 1 by 3 in any of this either in 2x plus 1 or in 3 minus 4x so let's substitute in 2x plus 1 2 into 1 by 3 plus 1 so this will be equal to 5 by 3 5 by 3 is our answer so this is the last concept of the functions and graphs which is pick's theorem what is pick's theorem this uh, theorem actually helps us to find the area of polygons in a plane whose endpoints have integer vert vertices so uh, it is given by a which is the area of polygon area of polygon is equal to the number of lattice points in the interior of the polygon plus the number of lattice points on the boundary of the polygon by 2 minus 1 very simple uh, theorem just we will we will apply this in a example so that you will be very clear in applying this applying this uh, theorem okay so this is the question find the number of integer coordinates in the interior of the triangle with its vertices at 0 comma 0 0 comma 21 21 comma 0 all right so let us uh, plot them so that you guys will understand in a much better way so this is my origin 
this is 0 comma 21 this is 21 comma 0 so we are asked to find out the number of integer coordinates so what is the formula a is equal to according to the pix theorem area of the polygon is equal to i plus b by 2 minus 1 just refer the previous slide so as this is a triangle we can find out the area what is the uh, base basis from 0 to 21 units so this is 21 height is also 21 so what is the area area of this triangle is half into base into height so this will be half into 21 into 21 so this is okay let us substitute directly so area is half into 21 into 21 this will be equal to i is what we have to calculate so i plus what is b what is b b is the number of lattice points on the boundary of the polygon what is the boundary this is the boundary right from here to here from here to here from here to here so what are the what are the lattice points on the boundary so here from 0 let us ignore 0 comma 0 point right let us ignore the 0 comma 0 point now this will be 1 comma 0 this will be 2 comma 0 3 comma 0 4 comma 0 5 comma 0 and so on till 21 comma 0 if we ignore 0 comma 0 points there will be 20 points here 20 points on this boundary and again if we ignore 0 comma 21 we are not ignoring 0 comma 0 we are ignoring 0 comma 21 then we have 20 points here as well now we are ignoring 21 comma 0 21 comma 0 we are including this we are excluding 21 comma 0 and we are including 0 comma 21 now we have 20 points in this case as well so 20 20 20 so total 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus what are the points how many points did we ignore if we ignored 1 2 and 3 so 3 which is equal to 63 by 2 minus 1 so 63 points are on the boundary these are the lattice points on the boundary so i will be equal to 21 by 2 into 21 minus 3 plus 1 so this will be equal to 21 by 2 into 18 plus 1 so 2 into 9 2 9 sir this will be equal to 190 so the number of integer coordinates in the interior of this triangle are 190 so this is how we apply the pig's theorem so we have covered all the important uh, concepts and the problems that come under the functions and graphs if you haven't subscribed our channel do subscribe our channel and you can also join our telegram group for which i have shared the link in the description box so keep revising thank you very much and all the very best